Hey everyone, welcome to our DAT IQ weekly market update. This is our update for June 10th, 2020. I'm Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics at DAT, here as always with Ned Damon, our Principal Data Scientist. And we're here every week to give you an update on what's happening in the market and a little bit of insight on what might happen in the future. Ned, do you wanna hit us with the updates for the week? Absolutely. So um, load to truck ratios are unfortunately starting to lag prior year. MCI maps are starting to cool off, as you might expect as we're heading into the post-produce season. But uh, some regions are still hot. Reefer rate is really losing steam like we expected. To that end, forecasts are beginning to bake in the expected post-peak slowdown, which is maybe not the best for reefer carriers and van carriers, but it is moving us back towards normalcy, which is important. We know your time is valuable, so if you want to just skip to a particular part of the uh, presentation, we have time code links down at the bottom in the description, so you can just jump to what you're interested in. Uh, Ken, you want to hit us with those market dynamics? Sure. Just like every week, we're going to start with an overview of what's happening on our load board activity, and we're going to start with dry van load to truck ratios. As Ned mentioned, we've seen a little bit of a slowing down stagnation, if you will, on the dry van side. We've talked in previous weeks about how it's going to be really hard to keep up with this hockey stick pattern that, that happens as seasonally expected. I wouldn't go so far as to say that we're completely done with our upward trend for the season, uh, but it's something we're going to closely watch into the next week or two. On the reefer side, it didn't quite go flat, but you can definitely see um, it's slowing down a little bit, lagging behind the prior three years that we show on this chart. I don't think it's anything to be overly alarmed about. I, I think it was a, was a little optimistic to think we completely put COVID in our rear view mirror so fast. But, you know, again, it's something we're going to track um, and compare it to prior years. Looking at MCI for dry vans, we pulled this yesterday. You can see the concentrated areas of red that have remained from prior weeks are still there. We're just seeing a little bit of a general cooling off, especially in the California area. Um, we do still see a, a nice nexus of, of heat in South Texas, Louisiana. Not really sure how much of that is a um, result of the tropical storm that, that blew through there, but um, again, it's still nice to see shades of red. On the reefer side, still a lot of red, but some of the areas that in previous weeks were kind of a deep red have cooled off to more of a, a pinkish or salmon tone, indicating that markets are softening up a little bit. And again, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that demand has dropped, it could just mean that capacity has entered the market to balance out um, the, the amount of demand that's there. On the spot rate trend side, as always, we're gonna start with dry vans. We're seeing very much towing the line that we saw in 17 and 19. Those lines don't materially diverge for another 80 to 100 days. Um, so we, we really are gonna probably settle into that trough. Um, but we haven't seen it materially lag behind either of those two years, which is good. And at this point, we're soundly above where we were pre-COVID levels. If you look at the year-over-year -year comparison, we are starting to see some very early signs of lagging behind prior year. Um, that'll be something to watch. It could just be an artifact of like when we pulled the data or just some very recent rates coming in lower. But again, something to watch to see where the trend continues. Does it continue up closer to $1.60 or where it's sitting at $1.55? Reefer side, this is definitely flattened, much more pronounced than on the dry van side, but still very much in line with uh, 17 and 19, which we had been tracking towards and above where we were pre-COVID. If you look at the week or the year over year chart here, um, you can see it's, it's really just middling about where we were in the prior year, not really breaking out above or below in either direction. So I think looking at history here, it's very interesting, but probably what everyone watching is most interested in what's going to happen over the next few weeks. So I'm going to turn it over to Ned to talk about our forecast models. Uh, thank you, Ken. So our forecast models are, uh, as always, presented in the form of everyone's favorite dinner, a spaghetti chart. Uh, you can see in blue the actual uh, spot rates for van that were observed by DAT up through 6.9. And then off to the right, you can see our four strands of spaghetti corresponding to the rate cast model in green, the short term model in red, and two blendings of them our blended forecast one in gold and our blended forecast two in gray. The rate cast model is our flagship model. The short term model is much more heavily dominated by short term dynamics. And the blended forecasts are a mixture of the two. And you can see here there's a really big divergence in the models between the short term and the rate cast model, where the rate cast model is expecting that seasonal trends are going to reassert themselves and that we're going to peak 
uh, around July 4th, and that's where that little kind of nubbin is in a lot of the forecasts, and then start trending back down as per normal seasonal behavior, whereas the short-term model is expecting continued strong growth. I really feel like we're moving back to normalcy, and I expect that the rate cast model is going to be the most accurate description of what's going to be going on, maybe with a little bit of the blended forecast. If we're still in a hair of recovery mode, maybe the gray line, but um, I would not expect that rates are going to keep on keeping on up to the peak during restocking. I don't see that happening. Uh, next up, we have our same charts for reefer. Again, the blue is the actual rates that were observed by DAT. And then off to the right, we have our strands of spaghetti. And here you can see there's actually broad model agreement between the uh, short term, the rate cast and our blended forecast all the way through July 4th, where we're expecting it to be very slow, kind of bumpy growth up through July 4th. And then post July 4th, there's a disagreement about uh, whether seasonal trends are going to reassert themselves. For me, I strongly believe that seasonal trends are going to reassert themselves and that the rate cast model, which sees rates peaking around July 4th and then dipping down as we move into the dog days of summer, is going to be the, the most accurate line heading into the, the future. And that's it for our forecast. And we're ready to move to our Ask IQ question of the week, which is, what's the next major market driver after produce season? Ken, do you want to handle that? Yeah, thanks, Ned. You know, it's been the one silver lining that we've talked about quite a bit is that, you know, the country is reopening during a time of intense seasonal upward pressure in rates. You know, if we would have rolled out of this aggressive social distancing in early January or, you know, frankly, late late June, early July, the, the the situation would have been the opposite and the seasonal pressures would have been negative, which could have really, um, you know, been a double whammy on rates. But, you know, we're, we're kind of culminating, coming to a point where we culminate around the 4th of July with the spring peak. And then it really is the dog days of summer, as Ned mentioned, until you know, late August, um, early September. And what's driving that will be back to school, some of the extreme early signs of retail shipping uh, for the fall. But between essentially the 4th of July or a week after, and then things really do slow down. So we will expect rates to come back down. How far remains to be seen. I think our best guess is probably further than typical just due to some of the economic damage caused by COVID. Um, but ultimately, we would expect rates to recede a bit and then come back um, in the fall. How strong they come back is something we're looking at right now, um, taking a more econometric approach, but I think we'll have more to share on that um, over the next few weeks. We're definitely going to be on the lookout for that second peak. I want to thank everybody for joining us this week. Um, I want to remind folks that we have uh, a more text-based update uh, with the, roughly the same information at dat.com slash COVID-19. That's dat.com slash COVID-19. Uh, if you have a more in-depth question, you can email us at askiq at dat.com. We love to hear from our customers. And, you know, just folks who are listening to the show, you don't have to be a DAT customer. We are also offering our top 50 lanes report for free. If you email at us at our Ask IQ inbox and request it, we will give you the top 50 uh, freight spot lanes with short-term historicals and short-term forecasts to help give a little bit of context in this still unsettled time. Um, we'll be back next week with a new update, and I want to thank everybody for keeping America running. Bye, everybody. Bye.